listening to uh, Free Association on Revolution Radio. Uh, you can join us at revolution.radio. There's a chat room there. Uh, if you want to have a conversation, then uh, you're welcome to to come down to the chat room, and I'll I'll speak to people in the chat room all through the show. So I'm going to just I'll go off on a tangent every now and again, but part of the show is part of it's going to be a conversation with the chat room because it's uh, it's a good space. It's a good space where to meet people. It's a good space to share resources, and uh, I'm used to chat rooms. I'm used to like years ago, Pal Talk, uh, audio chat on Pal Talk, audio chat on uh, Yahoo. I used to hang out in the, in the psychic rooms and the Reiki rooms on, on Yahoo chat in, let's say, 25 years ago, nearly. It's ridiculous. It only do, but they were doing the same thing that, that Zoom and Skype are doing now, 25 years ago on Yahoo. They were just a bit ahead of their time, I think. So they didn't they didn't quite manage to get the the search engine thing together to the extent that Google did. And they were they were ahead of the, the game on on in terms of audio and talking to people. I used to we used to sit around I used to sit around till about four o'clock in the morning. And we had a room full of people. There'd be there'd be like 20, 25 people, and pretty much the same as this. Sometimes 30 people in the in the psychic rooms, or the the Reiki rooms, or the spiritual healing rooms, and we just sit around and and do do card readings for each other and do healing sessions till like four o'clock on on a Saturday morning. So it was a good way to do things. I had plenty of time on my hands. Uh, I just finished work. Uh, left work in 1998, 1999, actually, was it 99? No, October 98. I did my Reiki initiation in the, in the April, and then I did level two in October, and I left work in November, uh, 1998. So I had loads of time on my hands after that. I did some work through an agency, but it was, two or three days a week or or part time or whatever it was intermittent I didn't know Google had the the original Yahoo chat doc time but uh, it doesn't surprise me I think it got sold to got sold to the Chinese in the end uh, but uh, there's, there's still room for Yahoo to do something The way they the way they did the the audio chat rooms and the vi- there was a little bit of video chat going on but not too much but it was mostly audio but it was it was well set up considering that everybody was on 14k dial-up modems at the time or whatever it was it was ridiculously slow I remember sitting around waiting for uh, Mozilla Communicator to download and it was 32 megabytes. So I had to leave my modem on overnight to download the browser, which is just nonsense. But we're not far off of going back to that now. It's because there's so much video on the, on the internet, it's slowing everything down. So we're not too far away from just bouncing back to 1996 or 1997 or 1998, whenever that was, simply because there's so many people there now. It was interesting. I used to, on a Sunday evening, I used to do global healing meditations in the, in either the Reiki room or one of the psychic rooms. And there was, a, there was a guy in there called Mike who lived in Bristol, who I think was a, a recovering uh, heroin addict. But he, he had a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of issues going on. Anyway, I used to talk to him a lot because for some reason we just got on. And he was in there all the time, and I was in there all the time, so we just ended up talking. And uh, I used to kind of tell him when I was do wanted to do stuff, and he would round up the people for me. 
So he would private message everybody and round up about 15 or 20 people. So keep in mind that I didn't, I didn't have a, a webcam at the time. And, and the, there wasn't very much bandwidth. So I was typing this meditation. We were sitting, sitting individually in our own spaces and I was typing the visualization and the meditation and then checking in with everybody psychically to make sure that people were in a good space. And then doing the next bit, it's just like, I, mean, I probably didn't have to check in psychically with people, but that's the way that I did it, simply because I could at the time. And it made sense because I don't want people to be in, in space that's not good for them. If I'm, if I'm in charge, then it's up to me to make sure the space is good as far as I'm concerned. It's not, it's not just about leaving people to it. It's like, if, if I'm inviting people, then it's my responsibility to make sure the, the space is, is good. And that, that's just the way I used to do it. I've never uh, taken part in any chemtrail discussions, popsicle tours, but uh, I, do, I am aware of it. I, I was given a, a video, uh, like a a DVD in effect it was in like early 2000s the a lot of chemtrail stuff on it and it was a bit beyond my beyond my comfort zone at the time it's still a little bit beyond my comfort zone now if I'm honest about it but but I will go there I just uh, I prefer not to if I've got a choice if I've got it I've got it but I've just been watching a I was watching a video on YouTube about uh, Ghislaine Maxwell and all that kind of stuff that was going on in, in New York around Jeffrey Epstein. So that's disturbed me a little bit this morning or this afternoon. So I try, I try not to go there too often because it just knocks me off balance a little bit. And I... I do my best to stay centered and stay stay grounded. But you've got to acknowledge that these things exist, but I don't need to know every every single detail of what's going on. If I'm honest about it, I don't really want to know the the gory details. I just all right, it exists. I I, I accept that people do these things. I don't have to like it, but I'm not going to let it distract me from what I'm doing because what I'm doing will have some kind of impact on that sort of stuff at some point. I mean, it might be a small impact in, in a few years' time without any kind of way of tracking it back, but I know that the work that, that we all do in, in terms of consciousness shifts has an impact, and I'm, I'm focusing on keeping my, my state of being in a, in a good place and my, my consciousness in a good place. And as long as I do that, other people will, will do the same thing and then the ripple effect passes out. So I can, you can you can send healing or whatever, but send Reiki is a general thing, which I might I might sit down and do a little bit of, but the the, the issue I had with the with the global healing meditations I used to do is that I was attached to the end result at that point. I'm not attached to the end result now. And that makes a huge difference. It's like, just send, send the healing because you're sending the healing. Don't send it for any specific outcome. That's the key thing. Just acknowledge the situation. Accept that it's there. And then just do what you do. Because you, because you have to do what you do. If you're a, if you're a Reiki trained person or a, a uh, shiatsu trained person or whatever it is, that's, if that's what you do, then that's what you do. It's not something you can really stop. You can back out of it for a while but or change the way it looks or change the way you express it, but you can't really stop doing it because it'll just come out in a different way anyway, so you might as well have a structure around it and call it something. Um, Talking of which, uh, I was rambling last week about uh, symbolic radionics. And uh, 
I got inspired and I went out and bought a couple of uh, whiteboards and some markers. So I've now got a, a symbolic radionics machine drawn on a whiteboard. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a big whiteboard and a small whiteboard, both with radionics machines on them. And I don't know which one's going to be the one I want to use yet. So I'm still playing with them. When I've worked it all out, I shall uh, let you know, though. Um, I was trying to work out the best way to do the symbolic radionics. It still doesn't make sense to me yet. Because you, if you do it on a whiteboard and you be kind of rubbing on a pad to get a frequency, it just rubs off the pattern that you've drawn. So that doesn't make sense. So I, I would have to rub next to the... There's a, there's a circular... There's a tri... There's like a... Not triangle at all. There's a there's a spiral on one side, which is is for the witness. It's for the uh, the hair or the blood sample or whatever it is that you're making the connection with. And then there's a dial in the middle, and there's a square with a with a square with an angular like an angular spiral on the other side, which, which is which is the um, the pad that you used for dowsing frequencies so and then at, at the bottom you've got like an indication for a battery and an amplifier and that's that's pretty much it and it's all it all joins up with lines so it's not actually a thing it's just a circuit drawn on a drawn on a whiteboard but it makes the point that the connection between everything that's on there it's just it, when you when you're looking at the witness, when you're looking at the hair, you're actually looking at the frequency. So those two have to be joined. The dial is the indicator of what you're broadcasting, so that has to be the same frequency as whatever it is that you doused. So that's the same as the as the doused frequency. The doused frequency is the same as the witness. So in effect, there are three expressions of the same thing. That's that's kind of how radionics works, I think, from my point of view, anyway. Um, and what I was thinking, because I'm used to working with symbols anyway, with Reiki, uh, it's it's based around symbols. So when you send when you send a distance healing with Reiki, you make a connection with a particular symbol. I use Zona because that's how I was taught. Uh, for for past present for past and future healing and for distance healing anything that isn't here and now I use zona for which is a a z a z with an infinity symbol in the middle of it and you draw the kind of loop of loops of the infinity symbol three times and you draw the z three times. So symbolic radionics is basically Reiki, in my in my mind, except that they were using a a dial and valves and and basing it on on a metaphor of radio. But ultimately, distance healing is broadcasting. So the 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 metaphor of broadcasting makes total sense to me, because that's what I've been doing for the last twenty years with Reiki distance healing. So and I'll, I'll, I'll work out a way to do this. I, I got enthusiastic and, uh, and bought a Shopify store to sell, to sell symbolic radionics stuff. And I don't know what I'm going to sell on there, but I bought the domain name. It's symb symbolic radionics dot store is now officially set up, but it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. I just I put one product in there. Which is a, a drawing of of a symbolic radionic circuit, um, and I haven't got any drawings of symbolic radionic circuit. It was just a test, really. But so don't buy anything. But uh, anyway, that's that was the symbolic radionics piece. That was the first half of the week. It was Monday, in fact, I think Sunday and Monday. I got enthusiastic.
And then Tuesday, Mona had asked me to be be a guest on her show, so I got to ramble endlessly on there, uh, which was fun. Uh, talk about a little bit of my history. And we, we went into a little bit of uh, coronavirus, but it was mostly about healing. Uh, I like Mona's vibe. She's got a good good energy about her. Very good energy about her. So that was fun. Two hours of two hours of talking about me. All right, Karen. Uh, I'll I'll do my best. I'll do my best to explain it. So the way the way Reiki works is there's a the distance healing symbol is Honsha Zashonen which I never, ever really used. Uh, but the, the symbols initially were meant to be sacred. Uh, they were meant to be like, held with respect and, and kept secret. But uh, they're, they're teaching tools, ultimately. So the symbols are used to help you make the connection. Uh, so I use Zonar because that's what I'm used to, used to using. Uh, and I, I was using that a lot for uh, for past life healing a long time ago. Not so much now, but past life healing maybe 15, 20 years ago when I first started, I did a lot of that. Uh, and that's the symbol I used to use for, for that. Uh, Choku Ray, which is a um, kind of a, what do you call it, an angle. With a with a spiral on it. Uh, in Teramai, we use two choco rays together. So you've got uh, you draw from the center out to the angle, then down, and then up on a spiral that goes in and round three times. I hope I explained that reasonably well. Uh, and the other one I use is the uh, say hey key symbol which if you look at it, I mean, it's, it's meant to be a sacred symbol. What it actually looks like to me is a kind of drawing of somebody's head. Because if, if you look at the, the, way it, the way it works, the way it's drawn is from the top of the front of the head down. There's like a, it's an indentation for the eye. And then there's, you go out a little bit for the nose and then in for the mouth and then down for the chin. And then draw the back of the head in one sweep and then two little bumps for ears. And to me, that's just a drawing of somebody's head. Uh, it's a mental emotional symbol. Uh, so if you're connecting to somebody's uh, mental, emotional body or whatever, you can do it as a body or symbolically as the head. Usually that's the way we think about it. So if you're making a connection, but yeah, so that that's more or less it. Um, those are the main ones that I use. I don't really use symbols very much anymore, but I used to use them a lot. Uh, I was doing regular kind of crystal healings. I draw them. With, I, what I do is I, I close close the fingers of my hand to my thumb, so you've got like a point on the end of your of your hand. And then if I'm drawing choku rays, I would start, I would, I would literally use use your hands, use your body to draw. So I, I put my hands out in front of, of my face in the middle and I go out horizontally to about where my shoulders are and then down to about where where my chest starts and then up and round three times in a spiral that finishes inside and then you kind of put a dot in the middle it's like putting a, a punch at the end and say the name you say the name three times i i do imagine them sometimes as well but uh quite often drawing drawing them you get you get a bit of muscle memory if you draw them with your hands so you can, and then you can start to just use that, just draw them on, on your leg or whatever. Sometimes I just draw them on a piece of card. 
uh, and put them underneath the, the table if I'm using a, a Reiki or a massage table or whatever. Uh, what I do is usually I draw them over the top. If I'm working on somebody and they're on a massage table or whatever, I would draw the, the choku rays over the top of their body. Uh, you can you can do them on the on the chakras. Uh, I, I, usually, I would just do a general symbol in the direction of, of the person, and let let the universe work out the details. Uh, you don't need to do all that, all that much mentally. Yeah, you can draw them. You can draw them on a piece of card or a piece of paper and put them under the under the bench, or put them in the room that you're in if you're doing some kind of counselling work or whatever. Uh, you can you can do it that way. Uh, now, if I'm doing meditations with with groups in a in a room that I haven't used before, I always clear the space as well. So I I use the the choku ray symbols in each corner of the room and in the middle of the room and anywhere else that I'm drawn to. I don't go over the top with it, but just in the each corner and the middle and. More or less, that's more or less it, and maybe by the door as well. Just to, to clear the space, to make it my space for the duration of the, of the group. And one of the things that they do in radionics, uh, I found a thing about... Uh, something they do in India, which is draw, draw like a, a mandala pattern on, that represents the, the frequency that they want to, to bring in. All right. What I think we might do now is go go into the the emotional freedom technique, and then into the violet flame. Uh, so, because I've been watching stuff about Jeffrey Epstein, I'm I'm a bit uh, I'm a bit agitated about that. So I'm going to work on that because I'm because uh, it disturbs me a little bit. So I'll use that as an example and just see how I can uh, release whatever it's bringing up. It's what it, I've got a name, really, whatever it's bringing up. I'll find a word for it. So it's agitation. It's, uh, it's, I suppose it's powerlessness as well. To some extent, I'm identifying with the, with the victim in this situation as well, so... We'll just do a little bit of, a little bit of emotional freedom technique. Uh, Karen, you can, you can. If you have a look um, at um, the drawings of, that the Indians use for the chakras, they're, they're like they're, they're they're drawn as flowers, but what they are is is mandalas. They're patterns. So they're they're the frequency. They're the sound fre the sound frequency as a picture, is what they actually are doing. So you've got, uh, and they've got different numbers of petals, so they've got different, that's, that's what represents the frequency ultimately. Yeah, we'll go with that, Karen. That's, that's good powerlessness, confusion, anxiety. Uh, I'll, I'll go into the, the emotional freedom technique now. So on, on a scale of, of zero to 10, uh, I was watching these videos a couple of hours ago, so I'm not as involved in them as I was initially, but uh, but they are still there in the background, so they're probably about a six. There are six or a seven probably in in my kind of mental space at the moment. So uh, start with a setup. If we 
you just as I say, you just use the the fingers on your right hand and tap on your on the inside of your left hand initially. I'll just say I'll just say something like, even though I'm feeling uh, slightly powerless, a little bit of agitation, uh, slightly anxious at the moment. I wholly and completely love, honor, and accept myself. Uh, even though I was kind of identifying with uh, the people on the receiving end of the Jeffrey Epstein thing. I wholly and completely love, honor, and accept myself. So all this confusion, all this powerlessness, the sense of not being able to help people, I suppose. It's a sense of not really knowing what to do next. A sense of, um, I don't know what the word is. I don't know what the word is. So a sense of not knowing. There you go. That'll do. That's a, that's a way of expressing it. So even though I've got this sense of not knowing what the future may bring, I wholly and completely love, honor, and accept myself. That's enough for now. That, that takes me to a, a calm place. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I wanted to go into Maslow's hierarchy of needs a little bit, because what's going on at the moment is right at the safety and security level. Um, So it's just above the physiological level. It starts with physio physiology, then security, and then goes up as far as self-actualization. You can't get to the self-actualization level if you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And that's, that's more or less where we are at the moment. So all we can do is really deal with the immediate future and, and hope for the best. So I'm in a I'm in a better place than I was. Uh, there's no no helicopters today, no drilling. So I'm doing I'm doing much better. I'm less less distracted. All right, I want to go straight into the the violet flame as well. Do that now. Uh, so I'll just talk through it for about ten minutes. Talk you through the the meditation. Um, what I'm going to do is dig in for for sh for guilt and shame. I think today because that that's one of, that's the things that came up for me. So uh, with with the violet flame, I'm just going to put some of that into into it to be transmuted. And if you, if you think about, I was thinking about the violet flame in the context of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And what it's, what it's doing is taking the, the lower levels and transmuting them to, that, to the next higher level. I think that's what it's doing. 
certainly that's what I'm using it for at the moment anyway. And it's never it's never actually been put into that context. So it's something that it's like the sex so the self actualization piece within Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So you can take a safety and security issue or a, or an emotional issue about about society and, and connection. If it if it's something that's getting in the way and transmute that to move up to the next level because you're letting go of the issue. So that's kind of how I was working with it a little bit. It's still something that's developing in my head, but we'll we'll do a little bit of that and then see where we go from there. So just imagine, just sit yourself down quietly. If you're in, if you're in quiet space, go along with this. If you're not, then it's best not to. Just do do it when you're in good space. Because if you're being interrupted and you're in the middle of a meditation, it's not a not a good thing really. But uh, I'm in pretty good space, so I'll just talk myself through it, and then invite you to do the same thing, but with your own with your own issues, whatever whatever they are. So just just sit quietly for a moment and just tune into your breathing. Just watch the rise and fall of your chest as you're breathing. Watch how your body moves and, and responds to the natural way of breathing. Just check in with your body. See if there's any aches or pains that you might want to breathe into and just see if you can release a little bit of the tension that's in your body. If you spot anything. I focus around at the moment around my ankles and feet. And then just check in a bit further up and move up your body is just do a little bit of a body scan and see where the where the tension is see if you can adjust your posture just to release a little bit of tension if you notice anything that's not quite balanced in terms of your posture just adjust it a little bit see if you can find a, a way of sitting that keeps your spine straight and your feet on the floor and it's, it's fairly balanced And just imagine the the beginnings of a of a violet of a like a violet purple flame around your feet, just in a ring around you, a circle around you. Small flames initially, but starting to grow. And just allow yourself to be within the within the violet fire within the violet light and let it surround you let it let it become part of who you are just for a few few minutes so you're adding the capacity to to dissolve and transmute to your innate abilities to to move through things And we all have an ability to let go when we when we're holding on to stuff, but sometimes we forget that we've actually got that ability. So for me, sitting in the sitting sitting in the violet light, I tend to go for a little bit of a lighter colour, like so a lilac, but you can go for dark purple, like a deep purple, or you can go lighter and go for a lilac. It's entirely up to you. And what are the issues that you pull out and put into the flame are entirely up to you. I'm going to go with uh, guilt and shame for the day. Or you can go with grief, you can go with anger, you can go with depression, fear. Anything that comes up for you is fine. The
and just sit sit in the violet flame for maybe a minute or two. Just allow allow the flame to to break up, to dissolve and transmute the issue that you've picked, the issue you've put in there. If you can dig down to the root of it and bring up as much as you can, that's it's always a good idea to get to the root if you can. But if you can't, then just do whatever's available at, at this moment in time. And don't worry about it, because there'll, there'll be another opportunity. There'll be another time to get to the root if you can't get there today. All right, now, so just bring yourself back to your breathing. Again, check in with your body. See if there's anything, anything physical in your body that you might want to put into the violet flame. Any issues with muscle aches or that sort of thing. I, I always I get get a little bit of muscle ache and a little bit of arthritis here and there. So I'll put that in. But just whatever health issues you've got, just as an experiment, just let let the violet flame take. The, the tension and the pain away from you just for a little while. So you're looking for whatever the issue is, you're looking for the root of it. And then just let it burn away, burn away and transmute into something higher. All right, now just bring yourself back to your breathing again. And then let yourself come back in, into the room. Let go, let go of the visualization. Let go of the, the violet light. And bring yourself back into, into here and now, into the space that you're in. All right, so that's that's pretty much that one for the day as well. I'm nicely chilled out. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes or so, so we can have an, another chat with a, with a chat room. Just a reminder, you're listening to Revolution Radio. And this is Studio B. It's a show called Free Association. And I'm here 11 a.m., East Coast time on Saturday mornings. And we just look at a little bit of uh, personal development and psychology, a little bit of healing. I'm interested in all of those things, so they're inevitably going to be part of the show. A little bit of philosophy here and there. Uh, and I'm That's it. Did anybody follow along with the, the meditation? If you got any feedback, just put it in the chat room. If you if you want to join us in the chat room, then you can come along to uh, revolution.radio and uh, take part in the conversation there. And just a reminder that the station is listener supported, so if you can afford to make a contribution, there are lots of different ways you can support the station. They're all at revolution.radio. You'll see them when you get there. All right, Karen. Yeah, Doc Time philosophy is a, it's a bit of a minefield, but it's something that I'm, I'm interested in. Um, yeah, it's, there's there's a lot of different ways to approach philosophy. I'm trying to keep it 
as much as I can to, to practical stuff, to pragmatic stuff, uh, a little bit of metaphysics here and there. But uh, because I'm more doing the, the psychological level stuff at the moment, then I'm, I'm, I'm going with pragmatic, I'm going with a little bit of new thought at the moment because that's what I'm interested in. All right, Karen, there's a, a few things there that you were working with. All right, maybe work with the fear as well, as well as the physical things, work with the fear that goes with it. There's lots of ways to approach it. All right, I'm going to see if I can play that uh, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, Needs video that I was going to play because it will put everything into context a little bit did find one that was about five minutes long. So just play that, that'll take us through till the end of the show, more or less. And it puts the healing side into context, which I think it does need, kind of, so that's low. Here we go, I'm hoping you'll be able to hear this. It's only five minutes. on here so I'll see if there's anything else that I can use it's a bit louder I've got the volume turned right up but it doesn't seem to want to play loud try this one right Let's do this from the beginning
Yeah, there we go. A nice and short one. Two minutes long, that one. But it gives you the basic idea. So the five levels, uh, the one that we mostly stick with at the moment is the emotional level. So it's, it's about uh, making connections with people and, and your view of your own self. So what I'm what I'm kind of doing, I've got the all right. Do, I have, still haven't worked out how to do the the, the videos. It never seems to work. But the the studio is still connected, so we should be all right. And so the the five levels. The top level is self self-actualization uh, self-esteem is below that so that's recognition it's uh, it's standing out from the crowd the level below that below that is being part of the crowd which is the it's belonging to belonging to a group and below that is safety and below that is physio physiological needs so uh, just Food, warmth, and uh, safety, just knowing where your next meal is coming from, ultimately. Knowing that you've got a, got a place to live and that you've, you've got a structure in place for the future. So that's the basis of it. It's a, it's a simple idea. I'm sure there's more subtlety to it than just that, but that's... That's enough for a radio show, and I, I haven't stu studied Maslow in any depth, but uh, if you put the violet flame into that context, it gives it a lot more and a specificity. So you can, you can decide which level you want to work with, which, which level you want to transmute. Do you want to transmute the things that are getting in the way of uh, your physiological needs and your safety needs? That will be the starting point. And then start to look at the things that are getting in the way of feeling part of a group. And things that are stopping you from, from excelling, from things that are stopping you from standing out from the crowd would be the next level up. And then the final level, the self-actualization level, is, is the, the top level of whatever social hierarchy uh, we're talking about. So politically, it could be uh, being part of the local government system where you are or working with welfare rights or working with people's uh, uh, interaction with the system in that kind of way. So there's ways to apply a more general meditation like the violet flame into a psychological framework. And I think that makes it very much more, more specific and more uh, easy for people to grasp on a day-to-day -day kind of immediate uh, what's getting in the way of me being who I am, being the best person that I can be, which is what the self-actualization piece is about. So if whatever the things are inside of you, whatever you're carrying, those are the things to work on to let go. You've got to assume that you can let go. You've got to make the assumption that, that you're two years old and if you fall over, you're going to cry for a minute and then forget about it and just move on because that's what toddlers do. They just let go of it and as soon as they're safe, they're all right. And... Adults are the same. Ultimately, we're all we're all two year olds. We all we all need the same things. We all need to feel wanted. We all need to feel part of something. We all need to feel safe, which is what the current situation is digging in at. So, if people don't feel safe, they can't build on build on group structures and community structures. They have to deal with immediate issues. So it's stopping people from moving up that scale of, of needs, that hierarchy of needs. 
Uh, that's what the current situation does. Whether it's deliberate or not deliberate, it's that's the effect of it. It slows people down or may, makes people refocus on the lower levels. Karen, I don't know why the fear is there. You would need to work that out. It could be. It might be fear of death. There's a lot of fear of death floating around at the moment. So that's a survival. That's the survival and security need in that hierarchy. Everybody's got that. I had a death wish for ages, <laughs> which was interesting. Uh, I went on a huge on a huge high at one point. I was like wandering around blissful and then I just walked out in the middle of the road because the, because the bliss brought up the, the death wish, which it was weird. It was a weird situation, but it did. So the higher you go up, the more things that, are, that have been buried come out. The more light you shine on something, the the darker the shadow. Ultimately, whatever's there, if, the, if you shine a big bright light on it, it's not going to be able to escape, is it? You, so suddenly you've got things there that you didn't know were there because the lights got brighter. There we go. The, the music's telling me I've got to wrap up. So I'll be here this time next week, 11 o'clock. Good afternoon. Wait.